uh, another type of exercise that I like a lot because uh, this exercise can be solved in different ways. But the clever one is to use a geometric argument. So my suggestion is always, if you can, to draw things. So you will have pen and paper, okay? During the interview, you are not asked to solve everything mentally. So you have pen and paper, exploit them. The exercise is the following. You and I just agreed that next Sunday we will meet under the big clock in Grand Central. But apparently we are not normal people, so we want to make things complicated. Okay, so we want to transform our meeting into a sort of game of chance. So we agreed that we will meet at a certain time between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. So for sure we will, if we meet, meet in that, in that hour, so between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, each of us will not wait more than 15 minutes. So if I arrive at, say, half past three, I will wait for you for 15 minutes. And you will do the same if you arrive at a quarter uh, past three. You will wait for 15 minutes. If I arrive in that time window of 15 minutes, then we meet, otherwise you leave. And we also decide that nobody arrives before 3 p.m. and nobody leaves. After, uh, and nobody stays, sorry, after 4 p.m. So we necessarily have to meet between 3 and 4. So these are two boundaries for us. The question that I have for you is, what is actually the probability that we will meet next Sunday? Now, the way in which you can solve this exercise is, as I told you, uh, there are different ways. But I think that the geometric way is actually the, the most clever one. Because the geometric way is also the type of way in which you we will see solve exercises that are related to uniform distributions, the way in which their CDF uh, combine uh, when you introduce the minimum or the maximum. These are topics that we will see that we will see tomorrow. And the um, this geometric solution is also quite elegant. Now. The fact that no one can arrive before 3 and no one can, uh, can stay more than 4 p.m., it's an important piece of information because it introduces an asymmetry. If I arrive at 3, I know that you will, if you arrive, you will arrive in the next 15 minutes because if you do not arrive in the next 15 minutes, then we don't meet because I will leave. But at the same time, at three, I know that you could, you, you could not arrive before three because that was our decision. So if I arrive at three, either you arrive exactly at three with me, or it is not possible that you arrived at 10 minutes before, t before three. If you go at four, it's exactly the same reasoning. If I arrive at four, either you are already there or you will not arrive because we decided that it is not possible to stay uh, longer than 4 p.m. So if you take this information, this introduce a symmetry. Why a symmetry? Because conversely, if I arrive at half past three, there is the chance that you will arrive in the next 15 minutes, but there is also the chance that you arrived already within the previous 15 minutes. So this is what we get. If I draw a square, and this square is a square that has the minutes on the different edges, so that uh, the, the vertex on the uh, 
uh, on the bottom left is, is time 3 p.m. Bottom right is 4 p.m. Top left is 4 p.m. What does it mean? On the x-axis, for example, I can put my arrival time and I express my time in terms of minutes. These minutes start at three and they end at 4 p.m. So I can arrive at 3.01, 3 3.02, 3.05, 3.15, 3.20, 3.45, 3.57, 4. And the same for you. But if you take into consideration what I told you, uh, what, does, what happens? If I arrive exactly at 3 p.m., you can arrive in the next 15 minutes for us to meet. But you cannot be already there because our decision is that no one would arrive before three. If I wait until four to arrive, then I know that either you are already there or you will not arrive. So if I arrive at any random time that I call X between three and 4 p.m., I know that you have necessarily to arrive between the maximum between 3 p.m. and my time minus 15 and the minimum between 4 p.m. and my time plus 15 minutes, which is exactly the yellow area you see in the drawing. So the square represents a square that has a head uh, and a side of 60 minutes. So 60 squared is the area in terms of minutes. And the yellow area is actually the geometrical representation of our meeting area in terms of minutes. You see that if I arrive at half past three, you are in the situation in which you could have arrived already up to 15 minutes before, or you will arrive in the next 15 minutes. If I take any other time, I can go up 15 minutes or down 15 minutes until I do not reach the barriers given by 4 p.m. and 3 p.m. because I will not stay more than 4 p.m. and I will not arrive before 3 p.m. And this is also true for you. So that's very, that's very uh, important. Now, this type of exercise may seem uh, not particularly interesting for us. In reality, it is very interesting because when we will introduce, I mean, in this course, in this bootcamp course, we will do that very quickly. But then for the next two years of your master, you will spend a lot of time, you will invest a lot of time playing with options, okay? European option, American options, and all the things like that. And you know quite well, I guess, that the payoff, for example, of a European option, of a European call option, say, is the maximum value between what? S minus K and zero. So this type of max function or mean function for other type of options, it's quite common. And there are essentially situations in which the value of your portfolio can be represented geometrically as something that is here related to me and you meeting next Sunday. So these type of solutions, they can be easily applied to other fields, also fields that are very important for us like option pricing, okay? Or building a portfolio, or if you take the the perspective that I usually have. I told you yesterday that my field is risk management. Uh, most of the time in my research, I'm not interested in pricing something, but in hedging something. So if we build a portfolio that might generate losses, so if I build the portfolio, it is because I want to generate a return, obviously. But if you can generate a return it means that there is a chance of a loss because otherwise that would be a free lunch and we don't want arbitrage, it is not allowed. And if it is allowed, it disappears very quickly from the market. Uh, 
So if there is the possibility of a loss, you may want to find strategies to minimize those losses. If you are not able to completely cover for the losses, at least to minimize the losses. And there are strategies that can somehow be represented in these graphical ways. Okay, coming back to our example, I told you that the square has a hedge of 60 in terms of minutes. So the area of the entire square is 3,600, uh, 3, okay, 60 square. For what concerns the yellow area, the yellow area can be obtained by the difference between the full square and the two triangles that you obtain out of the yellow area. These triangles graphically, you see geometrically, are triangles, are right triangles with the two legs that are 45 minutes long. So if you want, you can either take the big square and remove a square that has a hedge of 45, or you can take the area of the two triangles and then you multiply by two, it's exactly the same stuff, okay? You see that the two that multiplies will cancel the two that you have for the area of the single triangle. If you do that, you find that the area of the yellow uh, part is 1,575. Now, if I want to know the probability that we meet, this is exactly the probability that we fall in the yellow area. So I take 1,575 divided by 3,600. This is my probability, which is 43%. So let's say 44% if we round up, okay? So there is a 44% probability that we will meet according to these not particularly clever rules, I mean, if you want to meet a person, you can set these rules, but let's say, if we agree that these are the rules. If you want to generalize this problem, the question could be, okay, imagine that instead of 15 minutes, I will wait you for N minutes, where N is a quantity between one and 60. Always given the solution that, always given the condition, sorry, that I will not arrive before three and I will not stay longer than four. And this is the same for you. Now, if you generalize that, the solution will be uh, quite similar. Geometrically speaking, the difference is that the general solution is the one that you see on the bottom of your uh, slides is n times 120 minus n over uh, 3,600. 3,600 3, is because it's just the area of the square. And the numerator is now a little bit now it's a little bit more complicated just by the fact that I'm not specifying the number of minutes, so I just leave that as a, as a variable, but this is the general solution. And you see that if you plug in 15 instead of N, you will exactly get the same result.